Hello guys, welcome back to Supreme Tennis where we have another tutorial for you. This one on the drop shot, a shot that is becoming more and more common in today's game, mainly because of how far players are standing behind the baseline. But before we start, please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already. There's still around 90% of you viewing who have not yet subscribed and that really hurts my feelings. So if you like the content, we would really appreciate that support. Now the drop shot, let's talk about who this type of shot is for and how you're going to benefit from this video well it's for intermediate and advanced players and there are three key areas i focus on with my students when trying to hit when trying to teach them to hit that perfect drop shot firstly you need to focus on getting the ball to land as short as possible and that's a priority initially that's the first thing before trying to get the ball to die before trying to add tons of backspin just focus on depth and try and get that ball to bounce as close to the net as possible. The second thing is adding backspin. And this is what helps the ball to die, which makes it that much more challenging for your opponent. The third and final part to hitting the perfect drop shot is more of an advanced technique. And make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video where I reveal exactly what that is. The pros such as Carlos Alcaraz and Novak Djokovic, they do this particular part of the drop shot almost to perfection. So make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video so you don't miss out on probably one of the most crucial parts to hitting a perfect drop shot. Okay, so you can see here in the first drill, I'm trying to get the ball to land before the cones. This is a very good place to start. Many players will try to prioritize, they'll try to first prioritize backspin when really the depth of the shot is what we must tackle first. And you can see it's a very short motion which is very similar to the technique on our volleys. We're now gonna progress with this drill by moving the cones closer to the net by giving ourselves a smaller target area and trying to get the ball to land even shorter than before. Now, to achieve this, I want you to find the highest point of the ball path on your side of the court. So you can see in these demonstrations here, the ball is always lowering as it clears the net. So if we just slow this shot down, you can see that this is the highest point, otherwise known as the apex. And from then on, the ball is on its way down. Now with the drop shot, you do want a little bit of height, but not too much height if it can be helped. You want the ball to spend the least amount of time in the air. If you get too much air time, it makes it too easy for your opponent to attack. Okay, now a very useful tip for you guys when playing the drop shot, and this is very crucial. Try to keep everything relatively tight and close to the body. So you can see here, my elbow stays close to my hips. Now, when you get out on court next, you can experiment with this. So try and play a drop shot where your contact is far away from your body and then compare that to a drop shot where your contact is very close to your body. So you keep everything tight and tucked in and you will find the closer your racket head is to your body, the more touch, the more feel, the more finesse you'll have on your shot. So if you really want to improve your touch and if you're one of those players who find that you're not quite getting the drop shot to land as close to the net as you'd like, maybe this is something that you can work on. So give this a go and you can see here it's exactly the same on the backhand side as well. Okay, moving on to the next part of the drop shot and one of the most common mistakes that I see is when players try to hit with too much backspin. And it's a similar issue when players try a slice backhand for the first time. So they see the pros hit the most ridiculous drop shots on TV, whereby the ball either completely dies or even travels back towards the net. And by all means, if you can successfully do that every time, so be it, but more often than not, it will just result in a floating ball that is easy for your opponent to attack. And in these bad examples, you know, I'm clearly exaggerating that to kind of highlight my point. And you can see here how open my racket face is. And this is just too open and forces you to sky the ball. So as always, first things first, just try and get the ball to land as short as possible. But this time, yes, we want to add a little bit of backspin, but controlled backspin. So hit with enough slice whereby you can consistently hit well at least 80 to 90% of the time. The more you start to develop feel and control, again, by keeping that contact close to your body, the more you can slowly start to add more backspin. Remember, you do want some height on the drop shot. 
This is what allows the ball to lower as it clears the net, just not so much height to the point where you allow an easy ball for your opponent. Let's just quickly talk about how to get the backspin and you do want the racket face to be open so you can kind of cut underneath the ball but you want the racket angle almost completely square and you can see here as I play these shots my strings are almost completely square to the ball yet I'm still able to generate backspin and get the ball to land two to three times before it crosses the service line. The strings will eventually open fully, or almost fully, but not until the ball has actually left my strings. Okay, now to reveal the final part to hitting that perfect drop shot, that bonus tip that I'm glad you stay tuned in for. Now, one of the most important parts of this shot is adding disguise. And this is more of an advanced technique and you should only add this once you can consistently perform everything discussed leading to this point. So it's one thing getting the ball to land as short as possible. It's another to get the ball to die by adding backspin, but making it difficult for your opponent to read makes it near impossible for them to retrieve as long as you do it properly. So the final drill here is to hit a ground stroke, try and get good depth to push your opponent back and then fake another forehand in this case and at the last second switch the grip and play the drop shot. Most of you will either have an eastern or semi-western grip on your forehands so set up in your normal forehand grip and at the last second like I said switch to a continental grip and then execute the drop shot. Hopefully your opponent hasn't even moved off the baseline. And it's exactly the same for the one-hander. So again, for this particular drill, hit deep. Try to push your opponent back. Then pretend to hit another topspin backhand. And at the last second, change to that continental grip and then play the drop shot. Adding that element of disguise on the forehand and then the single hand backhand is a little bit more complicated than faking on the double hander. With a double hander you should already have the chopper grip ready so that's just one advantage if you use a double handed backhand. And I just want to add one more thing when you're looking to play your drop shots. Try not to overuse it. And yes, some players will use the drop shot five, six, seven times per set. And of course, there are several things to consider when using this tactic, such as the type of opponent you're playing, the type of surface you're on. On a clay court, you might want to use it a bit more often. Or it could be the stage of the match you're in. Maybe you're in a final set and fatigue, you can see fatigue is really kicking in. So you might want to play the drop shot then. But part of the disguise is the unpredictability factor and overusing this shot can sometimes take away from that. So pick your moments wisely. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. See you in the next one.